history portion from chapter 3, that is the Sultans of Delhi. We find that Delhi is a very important capital city of India. Now, here is a history about who ruled Delhi from medieval India till today. Now, first of all, when we go forward, first of all, we have to know who was the early rulers of Delhi. Now, here, when we study about the Sultans, we will find many dynasties. Dynasties are the group of people who ruled Delhi from different times. Now, among these, we will be studying about the Delhi Sultanates. First of all, we have to know uh, from where these records came out. First of all, we'll be studying about the sources of the Sultanate. Sources are what? Sources means through which things can come from, or from which we acquire. First of all, these tariks, okay? These tariks are the writings in the monuments or the coins or any temples. We come across many temples where we find writings and we find coins they dedicates different time. Now from there, we come to know about the rules of different kings. And that source is known as Tariq. Okay? Now, when we come across the kings, we find that different dynasties, okay? Different dynasties has come across Delhi, who ruled Delhi from different times. Among these, the first dynasty was the slave dynasty. After the slave dynasty, we find the Khilji dynasty that comes. Next comes the Tughlaq dynasty and the last Said and the Lodis. This is not the end. We find after this, we find that the Mughal dynasty comes. That one we will be studying in the next chapter. But here, in this chapter, we will be studying about this slave dynasty, Khilji dynasty, Tughlaq dynasty, the Said and the Lodi dynasty. First of all, let's study about the slave dynasty. The slave dynasty was named as slave dynasty because most of the rulers, we find that they have no uh, hair. Hair means the sun. So they adopted some of the slaves and they made the kings. We find that this Muhammad Goli, he has no son. Okay? And he died in 2006. Now, 1206 we can tell. Now, here we find that this Muhammad Adet, he was a slave of Muhammad Goli. Now, as Muhammad Goli, he has no son, we find that this Qutubuddin Adet, who was one of the slaves of Muhammad Goli, became the king and he started ruling that king. In the slave dynasty, we find that Qutubuddin Aibek, Shamuddin Ildutmish and Yasuddin Barban was the prominent leaders of the slave dynasty. Among them, we will find that this Raja Sultan, who was the daughter of Ildutmish, she tried to rule over Delhi Sultan for a period of time, that is from 2036 to 1240. But she was unable to rule Delhi for a long period of time because as she was hesitated by most of the hesitating means, um, she was not being liked by many uh, nobles or ministers. So she has to resign in 1240. After this, we find that we come across how the slave dynasty ruled Delhi. We find that during the slave dynasty, this, the kings tried to garrison towns to empire means garrison is a tax collection means how they started to uh, collect tax from the people. Now garrison is a type means if they earn, if, they, if a farmer plow 100% of penny, then they have to give 50% to the king as a tax. And if they are unable, they have to sell their houses, their properties and give the proper taxes to the king. This is the slave dynasty. Now, let's go next to the Khilji dynasty. In the Khilji dynasty, we find that this Alauddin Khilji, 
he was the most important king during the Qingzi dynasty. During his rule, we find that people, uh, the Mongols, you know that Mongols are those who came from the Chinese or the Burmas. Now those people, they tried to attack their kingdom, means Delhi and some parts of India. Now he has to face lots of difficulty during his time because he was being attacked by the Mongolians. Mongol kings, sorry. Now, during this attack, what he has to do? He has to strengthen his army first of all, yes? Now, in order to strengthen his army, he appointed as many armies as possible in his capital to keep his capital strong so that it, it can protect itself from the foreigners' attack. Now, we find that as he has to pay to majority of the armies, he has shortest of resources in his kingdom. Now, in order to collect these sources, we find that he started to uh, demand more and more taxes from the people, where we find that people in his region were fed up from his collection of taxes and has moved to other places. Now, this is the story of the Khilji dynasty. Now, very important, next is the Tuglak dynasty. Tuglak dynasty is one of the dynasty which have taken different, different steps to strengthen the Delhi Sultanate. The prominent king was Muhammad bin Tuglak. This Muhammad bin Tuglak, he was a very powerful king. He tried his best as much as possible to strengthen his country. He was very much, uh, very much interested in his work. For that reason, we find that different steps have been taken by Muhammad bin Tughlaq during his reign. First of all, he tried to collect taxes through a scheme known as Duop. Okay. Now, Duop is nothing but similar to the tax collection, or we can say is a revenue collection through which people are being forced to pay 50% of their uh, income or we can say earnings. Then next, we find that he transferred his capital from Delhi to Dawlatabad. Now, we find that this Muhammad bin Tukla, he found, he thought that Dawlatabad will be a better capital for his dynasty, so that he can, he finds that Dawlatabad is in the center of his rule. But later on, we find that when he was being attacked by many foreigners, he was forced to transfer the key capital from Dawlatabad to Delhi again. And as a result, we find that Delhi became the permanent uh, capital of the Tugla dynasty. Next comes the token currency. We find that in olden days, we find that coins are being uh, used to have uh, marketings or exchanges or we can say to exchange. Now, in olden days, the coins were being made by gold, silver, but we find that people of the poor uh, section, they were unable to produce those things easily. For that reason, we find that Muhammad bin Dugla, he introduced a token system through which things can be exchanged through token. Token is the what? Token is, means uh, we find that they will be given some amount of money system or we can say it's a money or a paper transfer. Now, number four, we find that expedition of the Kursans and Kudachis means he tried to explore his empire broader, more and more, so that he can broaden his or extend his empire. This is the end of the Tughlaq dynasty. We find that Muhammad bin Tughlaq, he was very powerful in during his 
dynasty and for that reason he was being able to rule Delhi for a long period of time. After this, we find that after Muhammad bin Tughlaq, the last dynasty that came before the Mughals were Said and the Lodi dynasty. We find that we have no such records, better records of this Said and the Lodi dynasty, but this is one of the dynasty that ruled Delhi for a long period of time. And they ruled Delhi till 1526 until the Mughal dynasty came into power. Here, we, when we come across all these dynasties, we find that among all these dynasties, this Tughlaq dynasty was very powerful among these. We, 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 if we find that uh, when we go to all dynasties, we cannot neglect anyone. But we find that Tughlaq dynasty was one of the most powerful dynasties during this four dynasty before the Mughal rule. And as a result, we find that Lodi and the Said dynasty were the last dynasty before the Mughals came into power. With this, we end with the chapter and uh, next, in the next chapter, we will be studying about the Mughal Empire who ruled Delhi, not only Delhi, the Indian territory for a longer period of time. Okay? Thank you. Stay home, stay safe, do it for yourself, do it for your family, do it for India. Let's break the chain of COVID-19.